Right, so I'm nearly done with this window job. I'm getting a bit fed up with it. This is the window I've had to copy. Um, the actual windows are very simple. They're just plain, flat, about inch and a quarter by quarter framework with um, quarter by half infill, or not infill, you know, the bits across. These are the ones I've made. Uh, unfortunately, well, you can see better there what that little sort of handle thing is and the hinges they're quarter by no they're not they're three sixteenth by inch but those bars that run across I had to actually make that out of eight mil square because I didn't have any quarter by half so that was the next best thing but anyway the windows themselves pretty easy to make it's this lot that takes all the time so these things, I don't know what they call them, but they've got an eye on one end for a screw and the other end is pointed, that beats into the frame and then they screw it into the frame the other side. These little pff, hooks of whatever description, they're fairly simple. Made up some of them, pretty close. And these staples, they didn't have a sample for these, but they wanted some staples and they sort of described them and so I've made those. Um, the hinge pins, these, now I needed to make them the same as this, presumably because they've got to go on existing windows. Now unfortunately, this, I didn't have any 3.8 round, so I've had to use stainless because I've only got 3.8 in stainless. So, never mind. Then the job that's taken the longest out of the whole blooming lot is this thing. Don't know what they're for. They might be a keep for the next bit I've got to do. But anyway, these are a real pain. And they're still not brilliant, but, you know, they're pretty close. Once they've got a coat of paint and banged in a bit of wood, I don't think you really notice the difference. So there you go. So that's what's been keeping me going so far and I've got one little bit to do and that's this now this is out of spring steel as I say those uh, staples I think might go round this near the top um, to stop it coming out too far or being pulled out too far so there's a little scroll at the top there and you see that mark there where my thumb is I think that might be where that keep goes or that might be where it latches anyway I'm not sure I haven't got a clue but I've got to make some of them so, what am I going to use? Got this. It's about 10 mil, I think, something like that. Um, no, it's probably I don't know, maybe a bit bit under 10 mil. It came off my Land Rover. So let's light the fire and see if we can unroll it. It was uh, a spring on my steering damper. I re replaced it. And he couldn't just get the damper, he had to buy the whole thing complete, so I thought I might as well keep the spring, it might come in useful. I'm hoping today's going to be the day. So it shouldn't take too long to warm up and open this up. At least I'm hoping it won't. A pair of pliers to grab hold of it with. See if we can just start unwinding it. I don't quite know how much I'm going to need for each one, so I'm going to try and unwind quite a bit. Because I want to be able to hold on to it. I hate having to do stuff with tongs, so if you've got you know, a long enough bit of metal that you can work holding in your hand, it's always much easier. I don't mind these um, doing these window jobs, but people don't appreciate how long the little bits and pieces take. You know, they bring in a window and say, you know, make big focus of the, the actual frame. And that, oh, and by the way, there's a few bits and pieces we're making as well. And they don't realise it's the little bits and pieces that take the time. Uh, the frames took me a couple of hours. 
But all these bits and pieces have taken me about 20 hours. So, never mind. They need them. It's unrolling quite nicely. I can't work out. I, I didn't actually measure it, but I'm not sure if it's 10 or 8 mil or something in between. It's quite a nice size though. It's, I might actually make another little knife for work out of this and for shoeing. Because it's quite a nice little section. So I'll just stick it in the hole and unwind it a bit. It's not getting hot very far around, unfortunately, each time. So that's what's going to take me a little bit of time to get this out. You can see how quickly it heats up, and the forge isn't running very fast at all. I've just got it sort of ticking over. I don't want to get it too hot too quick. Remove any properties that it might have. Almost there, I think. I think with another couple of coils, and that will probably do us. It's actually starting to warm up a bit today. We've had a real cold spell. Um, although the temperature on the thermometer says it's warm, it's actually been freezing. The wind has been absolutely bitter, but it's, it's warming up a bit today, which would be nice. A nice change. get a bit more hot at one go so I can that's better a lot more hot in one heat yeah that's good nice bit there that's probably going to do me now straighten that bit out yeah that'll do That'll be plenty. Lovely job, yeah, I think that'll do me. It's amazing how much material is in a spring. I think that's only, I don't know, probably five, four or five coils undone, maybe a little bit more. There's quite a lot there. Just whip this off. That lovely sparks and the spring steel and the carbon in it. Let's go and let it cool down a bit. Right, so what we're going to do first, we're going to bump up the end or upset it because there's not enough material to make this bit at the end so I'm just going to do about only about half an inch and the secret to upsetting something is to keep the heat really short um, otherwise it just goes all over the place so that's probably a bit long but I'm going to crack on anyway, you can see how it's bent straight away Ideally, I wanted that a little bit shorter. But I can't afford to muck about, so I'm just going to crack on, make the best job of it, as best job of it as I can. And all I'm doing is literally holding it on the anvil and beating it on the head. Just try and upset that bit at the end. Just increase the thickness a little bit. It doesn't need to be masses um, because you know that round at the end is quite thin so you can afford to spread what material, material you've got out quite a long way. I'm trying to 
stop it going at an odd angle by holding it at an angle where it's uh, gone at an odd angle on the forge, on the anvil I mean. But I don't know if you can see if that'll focus, that's probably enough. It's about half as thick again. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to beat the crap out of it. Give it some beans. Now I'm using the rounded end of the hammer. Just trying to push it about a bit. In fact, I'm going to use my ball pain here. Really push it out. I'll get that width. You can see already that's coming out quite nice and wide. draw the bit behind it out um, it needs to be pretty thin it goes from virtually nothing up to about an eighth I suppose at the top and I'm going to try and keep the width fairly uniform as we go up <coughs> Ooh, excuse me you see that's fairly close already to the size of the original I'm just thinning it right out it's difficult because you want to keep the width the same but the thickness wants to get more as you go up but because because it's getting thicker as you go up you're not spreading as much so you you're losing your width but uh, I think we'll sort of get there. I'm just seeing, checking how far back I need to go. I need to come back a little bit more. Now I've not used spring steel to actually make something springy before. I made numerous knives for for work for shearing with out of it uh, and just hardened it up but I've never actually had to make something that remains springy so this is going to be a bit of a test for me I'm getting about right I'm just going to mark where I'm going to cut it off because I'm going to cut it off and then work from the other end Focus very well, is it? Never mind. <clears throat> I think you got the idea of what I was doing. So now I'm going to put the other end in. And that's the end I've got to turn down into a quite a small square. It's probably. It's under quarters, so it's probably 3 16, something like that. Or maybe just over. And of course, it's, you know, this is round, so we've got to draw it out into square. And the tongs aren't holding on very well. Holding on to sort of nothing at one end. Moves fairly nicely this stuff. doesn't take long to get hot either. You have to keep an eye on it, you don't want to overheat it and uh, ruin its properties. It's gone a little bit off centre there, I want to try and get that back. If we see there, it's, it's 
the waste has moved over to one side. I want it wasted at both sides rather than just one. So I'm going to try and... Uh, of course I didn't move the camera, sorry. But basically what I'm using is the the rounded end of the hammer over the, the beak of the anvil trying to just bring that back to the centre so that there's a, a waste at each side which I haven't done particularly successfully but we'll get there use the ball pane see if that will put more of a dent in it sorry I didn't get the camera quite far enough over can't think of everything you see that's a bit better now it's brought it nearer the centre Tidy it up a bit, keep it nice and square. Try and keep everything a bit straight. It's quite difficult because you've got transitions all over the place. You've got transition from the the thinness at the tong end to the thickness at the top end and then the waist in the middle and oh you've got all sorts of transitions which you've got to try and retain when you're hammering. I'm just going to mark how long I want it because obviously it's grown. I'm going to whip off that bit same way as I did the other bit. I need another light over in this corner. I've got one but it didn't occur to me to actually stick it on today. Right, so now I'm going to try and put the little scroll on the top. Should be fairly simple. It certainly won't take long to heat up. Let's use that hammer, a little lightweight. It's not going to need a lot. It's actually taking longer than I thought because the fire's a little bit dirty. Should have cleaned it out by now. Now I'm just flattening down about a quarter of an inch, if that. Quite thin. Just like that. Just as simple as that and then that will turn into my scroll and that does heat up very quickly just rounding it over the edge bring it back and it's going to try and tuck it in on itself um, let's get a bit of a close up you can see there see how it's rounded now on to bring it into itself. I don't know if that's what was intended originally on the original one or if it's just got knocked around over the years with wear and wear and tear sort of thing but that's what I'm going to do. Try and make it the same as the original. There we go, just pushing it back into itself. That's about it really. That's about all there is to it. Yeah, I think that'll do it. So that's the top done. So what we're gonna do now I think is put some bends in it. You see there's a, a slight bend that one down. It's a bit too cold. I think I'm gonna heat that up because I don't wanna snap that. And then the other end goes the other way. It's quite a subtle bend in it. So I've just got a slight bend that way. Let's just check it against the 
original. It's difficult to hold on to this damn thing. It's a bit too much. I'll take it out a bit. And then the other end needs to go the opposite way. And that I probably can do cold. Colder. Show you this. Yep, there you go. Pretty similar. Not far off. So, I'll have to let that cool down a little bit, I think. And then we've got to put some holes for the screws before we do any sort of heat treating. It's a little bit bent at the moment. I'm trying to straighten it up and like I was saying about all the different transitions you've got to try and find a bit of anvil to put it on to straighten it up it's still bent but hey ho right it's cooled off enough now just to put some centre dots in for the the holes just eyeballing them not bothering about you know, getting them too accurate. At the end of the day, it's a handmade piece of stuff. Just go and give it a drill. And this is quite hard, this stuff, even in its sort of a kneel type state. So it's going to squeal a bit. But it goes through. If it had been any thicker, I might have struggled a little bit. But uh, with it being so thin, it squeals and then it's through, so I'm not worrying too much. Just going to countersink them, like the originals. And just take the burr off the back. There you go. Nothing fancy. All off centre, so it looks handmade. Now down there, where my finger is, is a bucket of oil. So that's what I'm going to quench it in. So I'm going to stick it in and get it up to critical temperature. And if any of you don't know, I'm assuming most of you do know, the easiest way to find out if it's up to critical temperature is use a magnet. Because it becomes non-magnetic, which my magnet's up there so you can't see it, let me move it. It's a bit hot, so there we go. That's my magnet. So once we're up to critical temperature, just check it on the magnet. If it's non-magnetic, we then will quench it. Again, this shouldn't take that long. I'm just leaving it on top, not burying it so I can actually see it. There we go, non-magnetic in the oil. Some of you may have seen my oil bucket, it's an actually, it's an old gas cylinder. I cut the top off a gas cylinder. I put my oil in there but I make, re retained the top put a little lip round it and I put the top back on so it still looks like a gas cylinder but it's full of oil it keeps the muck out and stops it bursting into flames when things fly out the fire I've had people say oh you shouldn't have a gas cylinder that close to the fire it's not a gas cylinder anymore it's full of oil and I suppose people say oh you shouldn't have an oil cylinder that close to the fire tough it's staying there it's convenient Alright, so I'm just going to get the oil off. Now, what I'm going to do now, get the camera up a bit, test it with the file. Yeah, that's as hard as, that's just skating off of there. So what I'm going to do is, just on the back, just rub the sander across it, so it goes a bit shiny, so I can see the colours come through. Let's see if I can 
Let's do that. I'm taking off very, very little. It's just literally like the scale that's uh, accumulated from the the oil. So you can see that. See, that's just shiny enough. So I'll be able to see the colours run. So I'm going to use my map gas. We'll have a little look. I'm hoping that you'll be able to see the colours run as well, but I'm having to hold it in such a way that I can see them and you can't. When you can see them, I can't. So I'm going to have to keep trying to sort of flash it at you. I'm starting on the thickest part because obviously that's going to take the longest to get the heat through. And the thinnest part down the other end, I'm sort of not spending too much time. You can see there already colours coming. Now yeah. I'm just going to chase the colour down. You can see blue, brown, purple, all coming down. Yeah, running down, 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 down. That's a good shot. You can see it coming down quite clearly there. And once that's it, that's it. I'm going to leave that. Now, unlike hardening and ordinary tempering, like for a knife or something or other, this I'm just going to leave to cool on its own. I'm not going to quench it. So I've literally just put it on the side of the fire there, just there, so it's warm, it's out of the wind, so it's just going to cool down very gradually on its own, and I'm hoping that's going to be enough to return it to spring steel. So let's have a test. This is my one that I've just done. Pretty springy. Look at that. Springs like I'm loath to pull it too far in case it snaps, but it does the job. So hopefully that will be good enough. So let's just check the original, see what that does in comparison. So there's the original. Let's stick that in and see. Pretty similar. got the same sort of resistance so there you go job done